So you want to master Notion in the next 15 minutes. Well then, let's get started. Let's start with the sidebar. Here you have all your top level pages and within these pages you can have more pages with more pages and this can go on infinitely. To create a new page you can either click on this plus, you can click on this icon or you can press Ctrl N which will create a new page where you can give it a name, you can give it an icon and you can also add a cover. On a blank page if you press enter it will create new empty blocks which you can clearly see when I highlight them and if you press forward slash it will bring up a list of all the blocks in Notion. You can either scroll through these and select one or just search for what you want and select it or if it's a basic block then you can use the keyboard shortcut. The different block types are basic blocks, AI prompts, media, databases, advanced blocks and also embeds. Now let's go through the basic blocks and their keyboard shortcuts. To add a text block you can either click on this or just start typing in an empty block and if you highlight this you'll see all the different formatting options and you're also able to change the text and background color. Next you can create a new page which will open up this page and inside of this page you can have more content and at the top you can always find your way back through this breadcrumb. Next is the to-do list which you can create by clicking here or by typing in the square brackets and then pressing space and then here you can add in whatever you want and you can click on these checkboxes to mark it as complete. You have heading 1, 2 and 3 which you can create by using the hashtag so hashtag 1 is heading 1 two hashtags heading two and three hashtags is heading three. Next is the simple table where you can add rows and columns, not to be confused with the database, that's something totally different, though you can turn a simple table into a database and you can turn that database back into a simple table. Next is the bullet list which you can create by pressing the minus or dash symbol and then just pressing space. You have a numbered list which you can create by typing in one with a full stop and then pressing space. You have a toggle list which you can create by typing in the greater than symbol and then pressing space and inside of this you can have content and you can open or collapse this toggle. And with all of these lists, whether it's the to-do list, bullet list, number list or toggle list, if you press enter, it will create another one of those. But if you press enter twice, it will then remove it and revert back to an empty block. For the quote block, you can create it by typing in a quotation mark and pressing space or by typing in the pipe character, which is this vertical line and then pressing space. Next, we have the divider, which you can create by typing in three minus symbols. And then last but not least, we have the scorelet box, which is my favorite block inside of Notion. For the box you can change the icon you can add text you can highlight the text and change the color you can also change the color of the colored box itself and you can drag and drop other blocks inside of this colored box the colored box essentially acts as a container and is the best way to improve the aesthetics of your notion dashboard and to just show you an example here's my life OS dashboard which is a full done for you productivity system to manage and organize your entire life and as you can see, everything is inside of colored boxes, which gives it this nice and clean minimalist look and feel. And it also makes it easier to create multi-column layouts. The link to this live OS dashboard and my 20 other Notion templates will be in the description below. With Notion, it's not just a document with some text formatted to look a certain way, like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. With Notion, it's different content blocks put together to create a document. So you're not editing a Word document, you're building one. So essentially what Notion is doing is they're breaking everything down into first principles, into building blocks, and you can use these blocks to build whatever you need, whether it's a Word document, a spreadsheet, or a full LifeOS dashboard. To just show you what I mean, here we got a Google Doc, and if I highlight this, then you'll see that in Notion terms, this is all the same text block. This isn't an empty block, this is just a line break, and all of this is just formatted to look this way, but they're all the same block. And if I copy this and go to Notion and then paste it in, then you'll see that here everything is now different blocks. Meaning this over here isn't text formatted to look like a heading, it is a heading block. This is a text block, these are number blocks, so these are all different blocks and I can move these around, I can drag and drop them, I can do with them what I want because these are now blocks which you can use to build your document. And now let's say you want to share this Word document with someone else. All you do is you just click share in the top right, go to publish, click publish, and then this is the link that you share, and the person will be able to view this as a normal website. And if this option is turned on, then they can duplicate it to their own workspace and then make changes to this document. And just like that, you've replaced Google Docs or Microsoft Word with Notion. And next up, we're going to replace Excel or Google Sheets with Notion databases. So for the databases, I'm going to change this page to full width by clicking on this page menu and clicking on full width. And then I'm going to create a new database by typing in forward slash table and then selecting the table view database, clicking on new table 
and then here I'm going to give it a name and an icon. To add new database entries, we can click this new page button at the bottom and we can also click on this blue new button over here. Now a very important thing to know about database entries is you can open them because each database entry is a page where you can have more content inside and even another database which can have more database entries with more pages which you can open and have more databases and more pages inside infinitely. And because each database entry is a page, you can just drag and drop them to wherever you want them to be. And you can even drag and drop it outside of the database. So it's just a standalone page and you can also drag and drop pages inside of the database. And if we open up this database entry, you'll see that currently it's opened as a side peak and we can click on this button at the top to open it as a center peak or we can also open it as a full page by clicking on this button and you can always find your way back through the breadcrumb at the top. Also now that you understand that each database entry is a page and that everything is still blocks, let's go through the different Notion database properties. But before we do, just wanna quickly mention, if you need some one-on-one -on -one help with Notion, I do have a Notion coaching program where I will build your custom Notion dashboard together with you in your workspace through weekly coaching calls where I will share my screen, explain what I'm doing, answer all of your questions and help you master Notion along the way. If this sounds interesting and you want to learn more, just check the link in the description. All right, now back to the video. The database properties is the information that every single database entry has. And if there's database entries that has different information, then that should be another database. And because you now understand that each database entry can be a Word document, instead of having a Word document on your computer, which is inside of a folder, you then have it inside of a Notion database, which you can then link to another database. You can filter it, sort it, group it, and you can even just click share in the top right and share it with someone else. So there's a lot more benefit to having your Word documents, your Google Docs, inside of a Notion database, because now you can add properties to that database and you can do a lot more with that document. At the top, you have suggested properties, which is based off your database title. Then you have AI, which we're not gonna cover in this video. And then here you have the main properties. The first property is a text property. So here you can have text. The next one is a number property. So this one only accepts numbers. And you can also edit this property and change the number format to a percentage. And you can also change it to a currency and you can add a progress bar or progress ring as well. You have a select property where you can add different options and then you can choose one of these options. So the select property only allows you to select one, whereas the multi-select property, which does the same thing, allows you to select multiple items from this list. You have the status property for tracking your progress throughout different stages. You have the date property where you can add a date and you can also include an end date as well as a reminder. To get rid of these double lines, you can always just unwrap any column and it will move to a single line. The person property is for tagging a member in your workspace. The files and media property allows you to upload files or embed links. The checkbox property is for when you have a yes or no value. You have a URL, email and phone number property to add contact details. You have a formula property, which we'll get to in just a second. You have a relation property, so you can connect databases and have them talk to each other. You have a rollup where you can use properties from a related database. You have these four properties, which you cannot change. This just shows who and when last created or edited the page. You have the button property where you can add an automation. So when you click this button, it will either edit a property in this database, add pages to a different database, edit pages in another database, send notifications to someone, send a Gmail, send a webhook, show confirmation, open a page, form or external link, send a Slack notification, or you can define the variables and create formulas with this automation. And then lastly, you have the ID property, which will automatically create numerical values for your database entries. Now let's just quickly touch on Notion formulas. It's not as scary as you might think. Notion formulas are a lot closer to Excel functions than coding. It looks and formats like code, but it works like Excel functions. So if you have experience with Excel or Google Sheets, then understanding Notion formulas won't be that difficult. The only big difference is in Excel, you can reference specific cells like C3 or D4, but in Notion, a formula is a column, so it will calculate it for every single database entry. Now you can accomplish single cell calculations through another database with relations and rollups, but that's for another video or a quick consultation if you need some one-on-one -on -one help. Notion formulas will be the most difficult part to learn, but it will unlock the full potential of Notion and it's actually a lot of fun once you understand it. And to just show you what Notion formulas can do, here we have an accountability partner that shows you your daily habit progress and shows you what habits and tasks you still need to complete for the day. And here, if I mark my habits as complete, you'll see that it will update here. And if I mark all of them as complete, you get this nice message, all of the progress and everything updates automatically. If I complete all of my habits, then everything disappears. And the same goes for the tasks. 
if I complete my task, that will disappear as well. And if you're curious how this formula looks, here is that formula. I have a full tutorial on YouTube showing how to build this formula. And I also have a formulas 2.0 playlist on my channel. So you can just check that out if you want to learn more about Notion formulas. And again, the link to this live voice dashboard is in the description below in case you want to save yourself months of frustration figuring out how to build it yourself and would rather just click a button and have it immediately. Before we move on to the database menu, let's just quickly cover relations and rollups. So as you can see here, I created another database and if I go ahead and add the relation, I can now link this database to the database I have over here. As you can see here, we got the relation and I can now click on this relation and connect these database entries to the database at the bottom. And now that these two databases are connected, we're going to add a rollup which allows us to use properties from a connected database. So in this case, we're going to select the relation, the connection between these databases. The property that we're going to use is going to be the checkbox property. And then for calculate, instead of just showing the actual checkboxes, we want to see the percentage of checked checkboxes. And we also want to select a progress bar. So as you can see, we've now created the progress bar. And if we select these checkboxes, then the progress bar will update. So in a nutshell, relations connects databases together and rollups allows you to use properties from a connected database. All right, now let's dive into the database menu. Here, you can change the name of the database view and also give it an icon, as you can see over here. And inside the layout tab, this is where you can change the view of your database. Currently, we have a table view with the table settings. Each view has different settings over here. And this is similar to Excel or Google Sheets, but we can also change the views inside of Notion to a Kanban board. We can change it to a timeline, which shows a linear progression of your database entries, a calendar view, a list view, which is more minimal, a gallery view where you can change what covers and images you want to show here, and also a chart view where you can have a donut chart, a line chart, or a horizontal or vertical bar chart. For now, I'm just going to change this back to a table view and to add different views, you can just click on this button and then you can add them here. So if I want to have a calendar view, I can add that. I can add a chart over here. You can rename these, add icons, change them. And then also the last one is a form. So you can have a notion form and you can create questions based off the information that you have on your database. So these are all the properties that we already added. So it created questions based off those and you can always add more properties and questions over here. I do have a separate video covering Notion Forms, so just check that out if you wanna learn more. Now let's go back into the database menu. The next tab is properties. This is where you can rearrange properties, choose which ones you want to show or hide. Then we have filter and sort, so you can either access them here or by clicking on these two buttons. So we can filter this database where it only shows all the database entries with a checked checkbox. And we can also sort it according to, for example, the date property. And when it comes to filters, you can always click on a filter, click on these three dots and add it to an advanced filter. And here you can add different filter rules and you can basically create conditional if this, then that filter. Next, you have the grouping option where you can group these database entries according to a specific property, like for example, the multi-select then all of these database entries is going to be under their multi-select toggle. And just a quick aesthetic tip, here in the live host dashboard, as you can see, I've got this area section where these database entries, which are all the different templates and dashboards, are grouped according to relations. So it looks really good if you group your database entries according to relations and also give them icons. And I would recommend you to do the same. So instead of having a bunch of pages in your sidebar, you create these different groups and then you just drag and drop these pages inside of this database to clean up your sidebar and organize them. Next is automations, which you can also access by clicking on the sliding bolt. And this is only for the paid plan. And here you can have a trigger and an action. So for example, if someone checks the checkbox, update these three properties and send an email to this person. Then you have the load limit where you can change how many database entries are being loaded once you open this database. You can customize the database and add more stuff here. You can lock the database, copy the link to it to create another view, duplicate the database, delete the database, or just delete the view. Now, obviously I'm not gonna cover everything in this short video, but if you wanna learn more, then just join my free Notion community in the description for a full Notion course. And then another really important piece of Notion databases is template buttons, which you can create over here. You can add icons, you can pre-fill properties, you can add content inside, and then when you create a new database entry and open it up, you can then select this template and it will load all of that information on this database entry. And to just show you an example of how to use this inside my life OS dashboard, inside the finance hacker, here underneath in the income view, I can add a new database entry. I can give it a name. I can add the dollar amount. I can link it to an income source. And as you can see, it automatically added an icon. And the same goes for the expenses. So I can add an expense 
and then the same for this one it adds this icon but it also automatically tags them as income or expense which will then show here so here this view is filtered to only show the income this one only expenses and this one shows both so through template buttons which you can set as default you can automatically add certain information add filters and then everything is just automatically applied to all of the views to get this live host dashboard as well as all of these templates including the finance tracker then just click the link in the description or watch the video that's on the screen now for a full walkthrough of this live host dashboard